much. Now the question is, let me ask you this. Okay. What does that mean to you? Let me ask you this question. Okay. I like your question. Okay. Let me ask you this question. There's it's a good a, question. There's a, I you want gotta, you to answer it. You I'm not mad. Know. I just. Yeah. You're getting I, it out. Am I making it hard on you? It's okay. I like you. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun about it. All right. All right. Let me ask you this question. Okay. Again. Here's the deal. Everything you're saying is totally valid. We're ready to go! Where are we again? Howdy y'all, we're in Fort Worth. Party on Wayne. Party on Garth. Party on Fort Wayne. <laughs> Party on Fort Wayne. <laughs> Fort, Wayne. <laughs> Fort Wayne's world. Fort Wayne's world. Fort Party Wayne's time. world. Excellent. Excellent. To miss the Margaret's with it. But you know how big churches would be if they would go out? If they go out? If they go out. But they don't go out, they stay within the wall. So just maybe we were sent out to go find the one today. So you can no longer use the excuse, nobody's coming after me, because God, I think, very clearly said, hey Brad, look, I understand. come back. A lot of people have just turned from the church. Now the question is, is, is you know, have you turned from the Lord? No. The fall, Good stuff, huh? So excited about this breakfast casserole. Should have had a V8. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Okay. Why do people make it hard to go to church? My answer would be, is that many people throw stones. Why, why, why should you throw stones at a glass house? I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying that's what happened. And what we're trying to show people at the church is it's not a religion, it's a relationship. I you want me there, right? Where? Church. Not necessarily. Then why are you, why are you talking to me? Because I care about your soul. The soul doesn't equate necessarily with church. But I have to go to church in order to... To what? Go to heaven, right? No. You don't have to go to church to go to heaven. It doesn't say that anywhere in scripture. I wasn't there, neither were you. But I take the blame as you should to my friend. Okay, let me ask you this question. Why okay. do many pastors have their own agenda. No facial hair, no shorts, no skirts. Well, I can tell you, because it's of man and not of God. And when the people of Fort Wayne begin to see the love of Christ by people serving them, they're going to be drawn to Christ, not to the church, but to Christ. And that's absolutely. That's absolutely. How do you think God would identify you as a child of His? He probably don't. Okay, so one word is sin. Every, everybody does it. Oh, I do it. I'm not perfect. Okay. I'll be the first one to tell you. In the church, sometimes we act like we are perfect. And, that's and we're not. And we're not. This says, while we were messed up, Christ came in and died for us. Okay. In other words, it's not clean up your act, then come to church. It's let God do the work in you. What we've done in church is we have said, Brad, you gotta dress like this. Yes. You gotta look like this. Yes. You gotta give like this. Yes. In order to get closer to God. Yes. That's not what that says. Everybody here has a gift from God, right? Yes. Everybody. 
But there are some people I guarantee you here they never come and check the mail. But you have a key, right? Yes, sir, I do. Here's the crazy part is, in order to have access to God, everybody, everybody here has been given a key. Everybody. I understand that. The problem is, you know what they do? They never do it. They never use it. Because they think it's too easy. When you embrace a free gift, not on based on what you do or how you dress, any of that stuff. When it's just when it's just on him, you'll find the freedom. So the fourth word is faith. Okay. Faith. If you could fight the battle and win to miss the mark or it's with it, if your wish came true. If you embrace this gift, I'll give you life and then I'll show you what is true. But the only way you're gonna have that is when you say, Jesus, I want you to be in charge of my life. Not pastors, not the teachers, none of that. It's, it's Jesus. Tony Appleseed was a man who delivered the good news of Jesus Christ. And he didn't care what town he was. Johnny Appleseed was a forerunner for what's going to happen in Fort Wayne. Nobody from the church I went to, or even that church, but to stop me and to talk like what we're doing, above and beyond not filming it, except for you, the girls, and this gentleman, they haven't done that. Am I saying I'm going to be in the pew this coming up Sunday? I will tell you this. I will pray about it this week. And I will let God deal with me. Because of what we've talked about and things I've gotten off my chest today. All of you have planted seeds in time. Isaiah 55 says the word never returns void. Seeds have been planted. It's now the time to get the harvest. I just, I just want, want you to come up and, and by faith, you believe the harvest is ready, that we're, we're going to see more laborers this week. I want you to come up if you believe the harvest is ready, and that you're committed to going out again sometime this week. Sometime this week. praying about whether or not they go back to the church. Here's what I want you to pray about as well. Sure. I want you to pray about, um, how's my walk with Jesus? I know I'm not where I should be. I'll be the first one to tell you. I'm far from. But it's people like you that take time out of your busy day as a Christian, and these ladies and this gentleman as well. Don't judge me. You're talking to me. Our voices were not raised. You're not preaching at me. But it's people like you that make me want to do a 180 and give it a second chance. On my time, though. Yep. Amen. As we were.